Welcome to YouTube's favorite DFS show, where I give you my cheat picks, my punts, some value picks, and my favorite elite picks for the week. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay, he's ready. What's going on, fantasy football fans? I'm your host, Hussein the Brain, and you're watching the couch these are my nfl dfs picks for week 15. my favorite quarterback in all formats this week is lamar jackson i think the upside is tough to predict of course the upside is with touchdowns but you got that kind of added bonus because i just have a good feeling he's going to get a rushing touchdown of course that's kind of impossible to predict and when you do go off your gut that's no good for dfs Regardless of that, rushing touchdown or not, the rushing yards will be there. He'll probably throw at least one passing touchdown. So I love his floor. Although the upside can't really predict exactly what the upside is. It's still there. Might be okay. Might be good. Might be great. He's facing the Bucks, by the way. 5900 Good price, good value, what's not to love? Some other options though, you guys know I love to give you other options. Uh, more expensive tier pricing, we have Big Ben Roethlisberger in a home game. Has he been better at home? Uh, yeah, he's been a little bit better at home. He's actually played very well away, which is unlike him, but he's played even better at home. He's been a very good quarterback this year. One of the best years we've seen out of him, at least fantasy-wise. And man, this guy has been elite. Should be a huge bounce back game for Jared Goff. He's not in the main slate. We're going to be concentrating more on the main slate. But also a huge bounce back opportunity for Kirk Cousins. Xavier Howard is doubtful. He's not going to play. There's ways to stop this Vikings offense, but easier said than done. Without Xavier and Howard, the Dolphins just lack the talent. They lack the defense. They're not going to be able to stop all three uh, weapons, Diggs, Thielen, and Dalvin Cook. They're just not going to be able to do it. I see this being a huge bounce back game for Cousins. Vikings should be able to put up a lot of points. This should be an easy W for Minnesota. And for my quarterback punt of the week, we have Nick Mullins playing at home versus the Seahawks. Last time he played, he put up how many yards? 414 yards in Seattle. That's a very impressive performance. Seattle is a tough place to play. And Nick Mullins really didn't have high expectations going into that game. But putting up 400 plus yards, very impressive. Yeah, when you do that against a division rival and then you play him again, super unlikely you're going to do that twice. But the price is there. If you want a silly, crazy punt, 4800 that's super cheap compared to 6700 I believe Russell Wilson is priced at. Moving on, running backs. Of course, you have the studs. I love Saquon Barkley this week. Most expensive price running back. I love Zeke this week, priced at 9000 um, But those are the obvious picks, right? Everyone should know about that. But let's analyze the position a little bit more here for some more contrarian picks. I love Dalvin Cook in GPPs. There's just better value players at running back. There's just running backs with higher floors this week. But Dalvin Cook, his price is just a little bit too expensive. And he's going to probably have to rely on big plays and rely on getting uh, receptions. That's why I like him in GPP. Matchup is there, though. This isn't like a super contrarian pick or anything, but I do like it in GPPs. Not so much in cash. Same thing goes with Tariq Cohen. I feel like a lot of people should have reasons to pick him, and a lot of people shouldn't. Now, I always say this, especially on DFS videos, that I'm in an advantageous situation, that I get to hear what public perception is because I get thousands and thousands of messages and comments every single week. And this week, 
I've got two comments about Tariq Cohen, and both were negative. So one was like, oh, you know, he's not trustworthy or boom or bust, what, something like that. It was like, just don't feel like trusting Tariq Cohen. And the last one was about how he performed the first time they played the Packers, which is ancient history, basically. So they played the Packers week one, Tariq Cohen put up 7.1 fantasy points. He's a little bit boom or bust, pretty reliant on big plays and receptions. But the man has been getting a lot of targets. Look at this, four targets week 14. Then before that, it was 14 targets, eight targets, five targets, seven targets. Well, we have one with 13 targets against the Patriots, nine targets, eight. Wow, that's Quite a bit of targets for Tariq Cohen. So I do like him. Similar situation to Dalvin Cook. Not so much in cash games. I do like him in GPPs. Now here's a guy I like in both formats, especially cash. Joe Mixon going against the Raiders. Should be a little bit chalk here. Excellent matchup. Excellent price. He's a workhorse now. How many touches did this guy see? Last game, we see him really take on a, a true workhorse role. 26 rush attempts, 6 targets. Wow, so that's 31 total touches. And he got 111 rushing yards and 27 receiving yards, a touchdown. Wow, so this is what we expected out of Joe Mixon. At least this was the expectations from me and some other fantasy owners and he was performing last week against the Chargers. This week, an even better matchup at home. I like it. Not that it, it wouldn't even matter if it was at home or away. I don't even know why I said that. It, it doesn't matter, but it is at home. And, man, that's a super cheap price. I don't see how this isn't a super obvious pick. It's funny, though, because I enter a contest and then I see I'm like, what? what's up with the percentage? Sometimes the percentage surprises me. Uh, more so... Surprise, not with contrarians, more so surprises me with chalk sometimes. Like, I think a player is so obvious, yet not, maybe like Joe Mixon's only 27% owned or 21% owned, something like that. And I'm like, wow, I thought he'd be at least 35% owned, 33% owned. That's what I would, if I had to guess the percentage that Joe Mixon would be owned, I would say a third. So 33%. We'll see if I'm right. I'm not even claiming I'm good at that. Like, that's not even... We'll, we'll just... Just curious to see if I was right. Another great value pick with Rashad Penny being announced that he is out is Chris Carson going against the Niners. Seahawks have all of a sudden became a pretty good running team. Their running backs have been performing. Remember last year when Russell Wilson was the lead rusher? When Russell Wilson was balling in fantasy because of all the rushing stats, all the plays he was making? It was insane. Now he's not even, not even getting that many rushing yards. It's all on the running backs. And last game, it was crazy. Mike Davis got run. Penny got run. Carson got a ton of run. He got 20 carries. Was it 22 carries last game against the Vikings? A good defense. So floor is good. Upside's decent. Uh, the price is right. Um, I'm more excited about Mixon. Though. I'd rather pay up 500 to get Mixon if you wanted to simplify it like that. James Conner, I'd say... 25 to 30 percent chance he plays and if he does play he's going to be limited more than likely that's why i like jalen samuels if i can find him 5200 going against the saints he can catch he can run and he's a starting running back stephen ridley is he's gonna get some run but he's just really not that good it's more of the samuel show than the Ridley show. And on top of that, Jalen Samuels is immune to the game script. He will, you know, get some carries. And if the Steelers do get behind, he will be used as a pass catching back. Let's get excited about a guy who's had one good game, I think this year, Doug Martin in the same game, this Bengals game. I am targeting this game a little bit because both defenses are atrocious. So Doug Martin going against the Bengals. Price is super cheap. I think his floor is pretty good, which is, I don't know, it doesn't sound right when I say that out loud about a Raider player. But I think for 4700 I think his floor is good enough for that price. Like it's a good floor good value floor is that even does that make sense to you it makes sense to me he has a good value floor for that price the upside i don't really see there i just don't see the raiders scoring a ton of touchdowns moving the ball with ease that's not really the raiders they've only done that two or three times this entire year 
And one time, I know that was before, you know, that was when Amari Cooper was on the team. So it's very unlikely that he balls out, gets you that Damian Williams type of performance. But I don't know, 16 fantasy points, 14 fantasy points, 17.5 fantasy points, something like that. Very reasonable expectation for Doug Martin. And scrolling down a bit to 3,800, we have Mike Davis. Just want to throw that out there because Penny is out. Mike Davis should get double-digit touches. He might get a touchdown, might vulture one from Chris Carson. Don't really like him, but the price is cheap. More of a punt play. And the super punt who, look, I would never pick him in cash. I just don't see it. Peyton Barber. He's a starting running back for the Bucks. has a tough matchup, but maybe if I did 10 GPP lineups, I might pick Peyton Barber in one. He's really one of the cheapest running backs that you would even consider. The price is amazing. Wide receiver, I want to talk about Adam Thielen versus Stefan Diggs. Adam Thielen, 8,600 for a thousand cheaper. You can go Stefan Diggs. And that's exactly why I like him. Look, I project uh, Adam Thielen to get maybe 19 fantasy points and Stefan Diggs to get about 17.9 fantasy points, something around that ballpark. And for that one fantasy point, I'm not willing to pay an extra 1,000. And I'm going to go through, I'm not going to go through a lot of the expensive wide receivers. We're going to skim through that because it's more depending on what you're trying to do. I want to point out some interesting wide receivers, some wide receivers that maybe you weren't thinking of to help you out. Like everyone knows who's good. Everyone knows this guy, like Juju's good, AB's good, Julio's good, Adams, everyone knows that. And if you're playing a GPP, like, I'm not in love with Juju or AB necessarily this week. I'm sure at least one of them will go off. But if I'm picking Big Ben, who is a really good QB to pick, then, of course, I'm going to stack them with either one or maybe both of them. Or do one with AB, one with Juju, another with AB and Juju if I'm doing several, multiple lineups. And that's why I sometimes just skim through some of the more expensive guys. But I did want to touch up on the Vikings wide receiver since I do see a huge bounce back game for Kirk Cousins. At least the opportunity is there for Cousins to ball out. Josh Gordon going with my gut. Never go with your gut. Your gut sucks. I don't know. In, in season long leagues, going with your gut is okay. Like I'd say it's good. It's like a six out of 10. It works out six times out of 10. Going with your gut in DFS is tough. I wouldn't do it. I'd say it only works about three out of 10 times and I'd especially not do it in cash. Um, it has worked out for me once this year. I think I went Aaron Jones and Nick Chubb and they both balled out a few weeks ago. So sometimes works, but I do it more so in GPP and, and I'd only do it on a couple players. So Anyway, I have a good gut feeling that Josh Gordon is going to torch the Steelers. Maybe Joe Hayden is on an island with him and just shadows him the entire time. That could be the case. And I think Josh Gordon just might ball out. He has the tools. He has the quarterback. He just needs the targets. Give this man 10 targets, two touchdowns. I see it happening. Priced at 6400 I don't think he'll be picked that much. Maybe he'll be owned 9%. I don't know. And my favorite wide receiver this week who's been disappeared. Remember, uh, people were talking about like he's a wide receiver one. He's a top pick. Like if I were to do the draft over, I would pick Tyler Boyd in round one. And then as soon as that hype came, like as soon as the hype came up, his performance dipped right when the hype was at its peak. It's just funny how that works sometimes kind of like a stock market bubble or something like that you know right when he's bought like right here 21 fantasy points 20 28 24 everyone's on the high and then he gets 25 fantasy points and right here against the bucks he got 31 fantasy points and his hype was at an all-time high and then he dipped off after that he averaged like 10 points a game i see him doing very well against the raiders the matchup is amazing the price is there i like him in both formats 
why not? Like, why not go and s- save up on other positions? Go get yourself a good running back or something like that. Really quick, I want to talk about Corey Davis, a true boomer bust player. He gets four points, 14 points, 23, 4, 28, 12, 4, 3, 8, 34. Boomer bust, what does that mean? That means he's good for GPP. Can I predict what he's going to do this game? No, that means he's also good for GPP. Not so much in cash games. Uh, I would not trust that guy. Same thing with Calvin Ridley. Where is he? Calvin Ridley, 5,000. If Julio Jones gets attention, maybe he's shadowed by Patrick Peterson and they leave him on an island. But maybe he gets double teamed, leaving Ridley wide open on a lot of plays. Another true boomer bust player. Two points. Five points. 22 points, 6, 7, 19, 9, 7, 7, 21, 43, 16, 0. That is so boomer bust. Uh, maybe boomer bust isn't the exact right word, but inconsistent. You know, some weeks he goes off and some weeks he is terrible. I guess that is boomer bust, yeah. He is boomer bust, making him good for GPP. Priced at 5000 should be able to squeeze him in any GPP lineup. Another player that's cheap, cheap. This one's really cheap. Calvin really wasn't that cheap. Um, he was medium priced to cheap. This is a really cheap pick, and that's David Moore. Oh, let me talk about Sterling Shepard really quick. So I feel like I'm obligated to pick at least Sterling Shepard or Evan Ingram, at least one of them in a lineup. Um, I mean, not every single one, but I feel like one of them will do well. Both of them doing well? Oh, I don't know if we can put our trust in that. But I feel like at least one of them will do well. I'm, I'm leaning more towards Ingram. But Sterling Shepard's price is super cheap, though. 4400 uh, Odell Beckham is out this week. David Moore priced at 4300 I believe Doug Baldwin is out as of now. I don't think they announced it. Um, I got to check up on that, but I, if Doug Baldwin is out, David Moore starting wide receiver, he'll get plenty of targets, plenty of opportunities. There were several targets that David Moore got against the Vikings game. Like he could have easily got two touchdowns. It was really close. He's been pretty good, man. I think for that price, you can't really do much better. Allen Robinson is questionable, but regardless of that, I still like Taylor Gabriel priced at 4,200. He's kind of tailed off a little bit like Tyler Boyd. He had the hype right here. He's got 33 points, 20 points. Um, and then the hype really wore down once he got right here, like five, nine, seven, zero. The hype completely wore off after that zero point performance against the Lions. Nobody started him after that. And this is why he makes good for a GPP play or even a cash play because uh, of his cheap price. I probably wouldn't pick him in cash, but to have him in maybe 15% of my GPP lineups would be good. Another good GPP pick. Who do we got? I feel like I'm naming way too many players. Whatever. John Ross, 4,000. He's got the speed. He has no consistency, no floor. And that's why we like John Ross as a cheap GPP play. Another cheap option, a guy I mentioned a few times in these videos, Marcel Aitman. Uh, he gets the targets. Going up against the Bengals, maybe he does something. He's been okay. Like, I don't, I don't know. He's been okay. I think he'll do well. Moving on to tight ends. My favorite tight end is Eric Ebron. A little bit of a situation here. I actually like Ebron more if Hilton does play. That way the defense just doesn't focus on Ebron. Everyone knows Andrew Luck loves going to the tight end. Also opposing defenses know that as well. Priced at 5,900, pretty expensive. I like him regardless of any matchup he's going against. He has a high floor. Pretty good ceiling, and Andrew Luck is playing at an elite level this year. Gronk is priced at 5,800 if you want to take that risk. Could be a high-scoring game. Steelers, Patriots, pretty good game right there. Who else we got? Um, Evan Ingram, yes, 4,100. This is going to be a really good tight end for me because if he doesn't perform that well, like what did he get last game? Seven. Oh, he got 10 fantasy points. That's not bad. Getting 10 fantasy points... At that price, 4100 is not going to kill your team, even if he gets like eight, uh, that he, you know, his usual eight fantasy. He's averaging nine fantasy points uh, per game. So I think that's going to be worth it. And if he gets in the end zone, man, he's going to really 
hit value. I do like him. And another good thing about him that and I hear public perception, everyone hates him. Everyone's disappointed in him. They're sad. They don't like him. So he will be a bit of a contrarian pick. The last week, a lot of People were on Evan Ingram, so I, I'd say it's going to be a little bit less this week because he screwed over owners and they're emotional. Who else we got? Brait, 4,000, uh, McDonald, uh, da, da, da. okay, and a punt. I want a punt, and that is none other than Mark Andrews, priced at 2700 If he gets a touchdown, that's going to be good for you. Hey, you know what? I just thought of this. Maybe I stack him with Lamar Jackson in a GPP. Hey, why not? That's so cheap. If Mark Andrews were to score two touchdowns, which is highly unlikely, and you have Lamar Jackson, and now you're able to spend up on guys like Saquon, Zeke, Mixon, you know, get the best defense, uh, you know, get the best wide receivers, like you're really able to spend up if you go with a guy like Mark Andrews, who's priced Look, Ebron's 5900 so that's 3200 cheaper than Ebron. So literally the difference between a mid-priced running back to the most expensive priced running back like Saquon or Zeke, who's 9000 plus. Let's keep it simple again with defenses. My favorite defense is the Bills. Bills priced at 2800 That's like a mid-price. Like that's not even, that's not expensive nor cheap. But they could be the best defense this week. And the Lions, half their starters are out. They're banged up on both sides of the field. If you were to look at Matthew Stafford and the Lions last year and be like, okay, this team's pretty good. But if they didn't have Golden Tate, if they didn't have Ebron or any other tight end, if they didn't have uh, Marvin Jones, this would be a bad team. And maybe, you know, their potential draft pick, who's a good running back, carry on Johnson. They didn't have him either. Or uh, Bruce Ellington, uh, somebody they would sign off the streets. They didn't have him either. You'd be like, wow, this offense is going to be atrocious. Well, that's exactly what's happening right now, folks. All those players are out. And on top of that, Matthew Stafford is questionable. I have no clue if he's going to play or not. Maybe it's a 50-50. I don't know. If he's not playing... I believe Matt Castle is the backup to Stafford. Uh, I don't care. Anyone playing there, it's not going to be good. There's no receivers other than Galladay. Um, they're just depleted. The season has just gone downhill for the Lions. And look, I do like other defenses better, but not the price. Like for the price and the upside the Bills have, low scoring game. Also, Bills favorited to win. That's why I like them. The value is there. And defenses are tough to predict anyways. Might as well go with a cheaper option. But I did want to go over some other defenses for you. A defense with the most upside could be the Jaguars. This is a team that's not to be trusted. They mess up consistently. But with this Mark Sanchez-Josh Jackson combo going on in Washington, I think the Jaguars' D could do very well at home. This could be a disaster game for Washington. Probably be low scoring. And Jaguars' D might destroy Washington. A little bit inconsistent, a little bit scary, a little risque. Vikings D going against the Dolphins priced at 3100 I love this defense. Good floor, pretty good upside, priced at 3000 Probably would be my favorite D if there were a couple more lines that were healthy. Uh, I mean, the price is right. They're, I believe they're way more expensive on FanDuel. So... Might want to really consider them. Could be my second most favorite defense because, I mean, the price is really good. Good value. Also, uh, Falcons, super risky, but they're going against the Cardinals. Probably the best matchup you can have. And who else we got? Titans going against the Giants. No Odell Beckham. Giants kind of suck, especially without Odell Beckham. Their best quarterback on the team. Haha. <laughs> yes, I read the memes. And Lions D going against the Bills. I'm not picking them, but want to throw them out there because they are 2,500, one of the cheapest defenses you would even consider. And on FanDuel, 49ers D is much more expensive, but on DraftKings, they're the absolutely most expensive. And I, look, I'm not, I'm probably not picking them and I'm not vouching for them. I know this is my team, the team I like. I get that. It's non-biased, non-biased advice here. Priced at 2000 though, I really, truly believe they won't be the worst defense this week. Now, that's not that's not enough for you to win 
and DFS. I get that. But still, at that price, it's a pretty good punt at defense. I would rather spend up a thousand and get the Ravens or Bills, but just wanted to throw that out there that I believe even a terrible defense like the Niners is a bit underpriced. They should be at least like 2200 like they're up look with the Bucks or the Cardinals. Um, 2200. I think that's a, that's at least the price. I'd probably price them like a 20, maybe even 23 or 2400. And they're the absolute cheapest. They're even l- cheaper than the Dolphins. Like they're the absolute cheapest. No other defense is even tied at that price. And I almost forgot this Saturday, December 14th, 7 30 p.m. Check out my live stream. It's going to be amazing. I'm giving away cash, I'm giving away a special, awesome, Signed mini helmet by Saquon Barkley. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be the best live stream. We're getting towards the end of the year, and I just wanted to, you know, end it with a big bang. And that's going to be during this live stream again. That's Saturday, December 14th, 7 30 p.m. Be there or be square. I did rank all the kickers this week on one of my previous videos, so make sure you watch the waiver wire week 15 video. I ranked all the kickers, even those that are not available, from Greg Zerline all the way to Daniel Carlson on the Raiders. I ranked my top 20, so if you do want to see the kickers, check out that video. Make sure you guys subscribe to this YouTube channel by hitting the white couch icon that's popping up right there. Also, there's an orange couch icon because we have a second channel, Fantasy Couch Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to both. I'd really appreciate it. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Dislike if you want me to lose in DFS and you're a hater. It's okay. I still love you. I wish you guys good luck.